Today on Cloud Storage Bytes, we're going to go where a lot of web devs would rather not go. We're talking about cores. And we're going to do it twice. In true Storage Bytes fashion, I'll be with you every step of the way. So keep calm and stay tuned for part one of our cores adventure. Contrary to what other web devs might tell you, Cores is a security feature of browsers and not just a frustration dream come to life. First, I'll give an overview of what Cores is. Then I'll address how to implement Cores for Google Cloud Storage objects. Let's get to the basics of understanding Cores. First of all, Cores is short for Cross-Origin Resource Sharing. To understand what this means, it really helps to first understand same-origin resource sharing. The same origin policy is a security policy enforced on web browsers to prevent interactions between resources from different origins, like domains. I like to think of it as preventing a bait and switch. If I go to a website, say cat.pix, I expect to interact with resources of cat.pix. But what if cat.pix, instead of showing photos of adorable cats, downloaded malicious software from some other website. The same origin policy looks at the calls that are coming from a website and ensures they come from, you guessed it, the same origin. So the same origin policy is a good thing. It protects users. However, it can also prevent legitimate interactions between known origins. For example, a script on a page hosted on App Engine at example.appspot.com might need to use resources stored in a cloud storage bucket at example.storage.googleapis.com. These are two different origins from the perspective of the browser. Thanks to that trusty same origin policy, the browser won't allow a script from example.appspot.com to fetch resources from example.storage.googleapis.com. You've probably experienced this as a cores error. Admittedly, not ideal, but take a deep breath. What does this mean, and how do we fix it? The cross-origin resource sharing spec, also known as cores, was developed by the World Wide Web Consortium to get around the limitations of same origin policy. Cloud storage supports cores by allowing you to configure your buckets to support it. So in our example case, you can configure the example.storage.googleapis.com bucket so that a browser can share its resources with the scripts from example.appspot.com. And there you go. No more cores error. Now that you know a bit more about cores, you're ready to get configuring. There's plenty more to come about resource sharing, but we're saving that for next week. If you want to know more about cloud storage and cores and don't want to wait for part two, check out the links in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and tell us what you want to learn about cloud storage. Thanks for joining us for this quick bite of cloud storage. See you next time.